Now let's look at a, another binary counter uh, that's two bits wide, but this one is going to go up and down. And so let's walk uh, through the design process from start to finish. So the word description of this problem is going to be very simple. It's going to be that I'm going to have a counter that will simply count up and down in binary. And this means that we need to have an input. Okay, so the block diagram for this is going to be, we're still going to have an output that is, we'll call it CNT again, it's two bits wide. And then we're going to have an input that is called up. And when up is, is zero, or excuse me, when up is one, it'll count. Okay, so when up is one, it will increment up. So it'll go zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, and then roll over. But when up is zero, it'll go down. Okay, it'll count down. Okay, so that's the challenge we have. Now this is a counter, so when we do this, we can take advantage of a few different things. So one of the things we can take advantage of is state encoded outputs. So that's a, that's a powerful thing. But let's take a look at the state diagram for this. So I'll kind of cover the things up as we go here so we can walk through it. Okay, so I'm gonna have a state diagram that looks like this. Notice I'll call my, sta my states C0, C1, C2, C3, and I'll transition clockwise when up is 1. So I put transition over here, up is equal to 1, up is equal to 1, up is equal to 1, up is equal to 1. And I'll just sit there and circle around here as long as up is equal to 1, and I will count up. When up is 0, I'll traverse the up opposite way, so I'll go counterclockwise. Okay. And then the outputs, I'm going to use state encoded outputs, so I'm simply going to have C and T is equal to 0, 0 in C0, and C and T is equal to 0, 1 here, C and T is equal to 1, 0 there, and C and T is equal to 1, 1 there. So I will allow the states themselves to dictate what the output value is. Now these are state encoded outputs, so that when we go to choose our state code, we will select the output value, and that will minimize our output logic. And this is the, the diagram that we'll use, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the state transition table. Exact same thing, current state, you have two values for up in every state, and then for each value, you just tell where it's gonna go. So if I'm in C0 and I get a one, I go up to C1. If C0 is a zero, I go down to C3. So that represents going clock counterclockwise. Now notice that the output is only dependent on the current state. This is a more type machine. So I only have to list it like this. Okay, so I'm gonna list it just representing that it's only dependent on the current state. Okay, so now I go to the state memory synthesis. And since I did this table electronically, it's easy just to copy and paste it and expand it. But now what I'm gonna do is I wanna start looking at the state memory synthesis. So I'm going to encode the states using the output values. So I wanted the output of C and T equals 0, 0. So I'm going to encode C0 with the code 0, 0. I will encode C1 with the output value, or with the codes 0, 1. And by choosing those particular codes, that allows me to use the current states as my output. Okay, so let's take a look at what that looks like when we go and update our table. So now I have the new updated table. And I'm going to call my current state variables Q1 cur and Q0 cur and I'll call my next state variables q1 next and q0 next. And all I do is I simply put these in, and I went ahead and filled these in. Uh, I duplicated the state names here. So I put c0 here and here, just to make the table more complete. Notice that the outputs, I listed them twice for every current state, even though I didn't really need to, because they're always the same, but it's just to make the table look more complete. So this is my new table. It's the same as, this is a state transition table, but now it's completed. And the state coding is done. I need two D flip flops, okay, because one for each state code, and then I have my state variables. So I'm sitting here and it's like, okay, I've, I've synthesized my state memory and I'm ready to move on to the next state, which is gonna be synthesizing my next state logic. <clears throat> so the question is, what is my next state logic? What am I trying to synthesize? Well, what I'm trying to synthesize is Q1 next and Q0 next. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna build a circuit to produce this Q1 next output. And I'm gonna produce a circuit to produce this Q0 next output. However, or this sig these signals, what are the inputs to the combinational logic circuit that will produce these? They are going to be Q1 current, Q0 current, and up. 
Okay? So that means that my next state logic, each of these circuits, each of these two circuits, this is a circuit and this is a circuit, it is going to be a three input system, three input combination logic circuit. Now let's take a look at the values I have. If I look at my table, I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. That's no accident that these are in an exact binary count. So this looks just like a true table. If I, if I covered up every other thing in here, so I covered up those values and I covered up that value, that is a true table. Okay, so that is just nothing more than a true table, a standard true table where I have the three inputs to the combination logic circuit listed in a binary count and the output I'm trying to produce listed there. Okay, so let's put those into, let's just put them directly into K-map. So I, I come along and I say, here's the K-map. I put those directly in there. And the first one, of course, is no good because <laughs> you can't group any can't group anything together. But what's important is that the inputs of this K map we're producing Q1 next, or Q1 cur, Q0 cur, and up. And I pop them in there. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And it turns out that there's no minimization I can do with uh, Boolean algebra. But I could recognize that this is an exclusive NOR gate. So I could use this an exclusive NOR gate there and by identifying the checkerboard pattern. When I go to Q0 next, I was able to get some minimization. So I was able to circle those four ones and get Q0 next is equal to Q0 cur not. Okay? So I now I've synthesized my output or my next state logic. And now the output logic synthesis is nothing more than saying that is my current state. I chose state encoded outputs such that the output C and T is going to be nothing more than Q1 cur and Q0 cur. That was the magic of it all. So that's why I chose that for this counter. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the state diagram, or the logic diagram. We're ready to draw it all out. So I'm going to come along, and we'll go like this. And I start by looking at the state memory. So there's my state memory right there. Okay, so I have my state memory. And it is nothing more than 2D flip-flops. But importantly, I had to choose which state variables were going to be tied to which D flip-flop. So I chose this one for Q1 next and this for Q1 cur. This was Q0 next and Q0 cur. And then my next state logic, I went ahead and used the exclusive NOR gate in this situation. So I had Q1 cur, Q0 cur, and up, all exclusive NOR together. And then I had my Q0 next was simply Q0 cur not, which I could bring off of this output right here, Q not of this D flip flop. Look at my output logic synthesis. There's nothing more than wires. And that's because I chose the state codes to match what I wanted from outputs. So that was a state encoded output. So there's the logic diagram for everything. And I kind of drew a box around it and said, okay, a clock comes in and then I have one input up, and then I have two outputs. And if I look at the timing diagram, it's, it would look like this. If up is asserted, it just counts. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Then if I bring it down, it starts counting backwards. So it goes, oh, I'm in 0, 0. I need to go back to 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So that's a two-bit binary up-down counter. 